In this video, I'm going to show how to use the object output stream and object input stream in Java to save an object or series of objects to file. In other words, we have some data stored in an object, we want to store it to a file on our computer, and then at some point later, we want to open that and retrieve the contents. I'll use our existing project where we're creating vehicles. And the first thing that I need to do is add a couple of UI components. So I'm going to work ahead because I know I'm going to make a future video where I'm saving objects to JSON format and retrieving them there. So we'll start with a combo box where I can select the file type. Not worried about populating that one yet. We'll populate that one later. Then I'm going to add two buttons, one to save to file and one to open the file. Now in the save to file, I'll add an action listener. And this is where I'm going to do the magic to take my objects and save them to the file. Now I already have a little bit of legwork done here because I'm already storing the vehicles in a vector called all vehicles. So that's something I set up in this program in a previous video. So I already have that. We simply need to save the vector to a file. Now first, we uh, need to use a file output stream but also that's something that's working outside the JVM because remember that a file is outside the JVM. That file could not exist or the disk could be full or things that are outside of our control within the JVM. So there's a chance that it could throw a checked exception and therefore we have to handle it. Typically we handle that with a try catch block but there's a special thing that we can do here called a try with resources. So I'll say try. And you see by putting the file output stream in the parentheses, that makes this try block a try with resources. And that means that this resource is essentially open throughout the try block, and then it's closed when we get to the catch or when the try block is simply over. But it, it allows us to allocate that resource in the try block. Notice also we have a couple of exceptions here. A uh, good practice would be to add some logging, which I'll likely do uh, when I pause the video or once the video is over. Our focus right now, though, is this object output stream. So file output stream means we're writing to a file. But what are we writing? Well, there are a lot of different things we can write to a file. And in this case, I'm going to create an object output stream. Object output stream takes the file output stream as a parameter because the object output stream says, OK, I'm dealing with a series of objects. I need to essentially serialize them. And then I need a place to write them. And I'm going to write them in the file output stream. So we need both a file output stream and an object output stream because they work with each other. After that, we simply pass in the vector with all of the objects in it to this OOS write object. And Java knows what to do from there. It says, okay, well, I know that I need to take these and I need to write them to a file in a way that I can read them back later. Now, a couple more things we need to do. Uh, we do want to flush what's in the uh, object output stream. That says, okay, go ahead and write this for good, and then close the object output stream. Next, let's handle the open button. Now, this one falls off my view here, but it actually will show when we display it. I'm using a flow layout and this bottom container. And we know flow layout puts everything next to each other, left to right, and then creates a new row when it runs out of room. So it's effectively created a new row. So you don't see the out button, open button here, but we can see it here. And with that, we can go ahead and create a listener. Now, this is going to be very similar to what we just saw, uh, only we're going in the other direction. And instead of output stream, it's going to be input stream. OIS object input stream read object is simply going to read that object that's saved to the file. Now, I know we have a new exception here, a uh, class not found exception. And we want to save this to a variable, but the trick is that what does an object input stream return? Well, it doesn't know what it's actually storing. So it returns the high level java.lang.object, the super class of all uh, classes. And we need to be a little bit more specific. We need to say not only is it a vector, but in our case, it's a vector that contains vehicles. So we're going to need to do a cast operation and anytime we do a cast, there is a risk of a class cast exception. Probably not a bad idea to add a catch block handler for that as well. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Just note to self, that's some tech that we need to clean up. Now what we can do is we can take this in vehicles, that's what we read from the file, and we can add it to the vector of vehicles that already exist in our UI form. 
The vector tied to our UI form is the one we referenced up above all vehicles. And we can use the add all operation, which simply adds a, an existing collection to our vector here. Now we have to be careful with that because if I were to press open multiple times, it would continue to add the same vehicles to our all vehicles collection, which is what's on the user input form. And that would look a little bit goofy. So we probably want to put some protection around that. Again, another bit of technical that I should clean up at some point. Uh, now, because the vector has changed, I need to tell the UI component that the vector that holds its model has changed and then the UI component will update as well. So for that, LST vehicles dot update UI. Then let's go ahead and close our object input stream. And okay, now that was fairly straightforward, right? We have a couple buttons. We have a you know file input stream, file output stream, object input stream, object output stream, and then we close our resources. We need to add some logging, of course. Uh, there is one more thing we need to do, and that is anything that we wish to save to a file needs to be marked that it can be serialized. So serialized is the process of taking an object, converting it to zeros and ones, and putting that somewhere. Could be across a network, could be to a file, could be anywhere. It's just a matter of saying, okay, we're going to save this object outside the JVM at some point. To do that, we need something that's really interesting. We need to use what's called a marker interface. Um, uh, we know what an interface is, right? An interface is something that can have method signatures, can serve as a variable type, so on and so forth. Uh, a marker interface is a special type of interface. It's an interface that has no method signatures. All it's doing is by implementing that interface, we're saying, okay, we give this permission to do X. And in this case, we're saying we give this permission to be serialized. But the nice thing is because it has that serialized interface, it, 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 our classes are implementing that serialized interface. They could be stored in a variable of type serializable, if that makes sense. Probably will make a bit more sense when I actually do it. So let me jump right in. Now, the obvious one to be serialized is vehicle. And to add this marker interface, we simply say implements serializable. Now, uh, okay, and you notice, unlike when we normally implement an interface, there's no red line here. Normally, we'll get a red line that says, okay, you need to implement these methods. But in this case, no, it's just saying, okay, yeah, 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 you can save this. And now that, uh, you know, we might say, okay, we're all done. But the trick is that we do have a, a couple of classes that are compositions here. So our vehicle is not just the VIN, the miles per gallon, so on and so forth. It's also the buyer. It's also the gasoline. It's also anything else that might belong to this vehicle object or vehicle class that we want to store. So let's go ahead and go to buyer. And uh, this one's interesting because it already implements an interface. So we, instead of adding the word implements again, we just say serializable. And uh, then gasoline. So implement serializable, just like so. And there we go. And again, no methods to implement. Um, Mustang, Prius, and Sonic, those are okay because those extend from vehicle. And because vehicle implements that serializable interface, uh, Prius, Mustang, Sonic, they all inherit that as well. So no, no special needs there. Now let's go ahead and run our program and see if it works. I'll just enter a bit of data here. And saving it is simply saving it to this local user interface. Now you see we have three vehicles and I'm about to hit the save to file button. What I expect to see is a new file here called vehicles.obj because that's what I'm calling the file where I want to save items. Now what we'll find is that it's not necessarily human readable because it's just serializing this object, converting it to zeros and ones in other words, and putting in this, putting it in a file. And it's essentially meant to be machine readable, ideally by a Java virtual machine. Now we walk through line by line, we get our file input stream, we get our, uh, sorry, file output stream, object output stream. We write the object. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You see vehicles OBJ. So you see the file starting to exist. And then we flush and then we close. No exceptions occurred. I click here and yeah, it's not exactly human readable, but we can indeed see that something was written to this file. Now for the real test, let's go ahead and close our application and start it again and let's see if we can open the contents of the file. So we start with a blank form. I choose open and note it hits the breakpoint that I've set so we walk over this. Okay we get our object input stream. 
Now we read our object from that, we store it into a vector, we add what's there to the vector that's backing the model that's backing our, our UI list. We tell the list to update itself, we close resources, we confirm that no exceptions occurred, and what do we see here? Well, sure enough, it has read in all of the data from that file and it showed it on the screen. So in this video, we've seen how to use an object output stream and object input stream to save and retrieve Java objects natively to a file. This is ideal when a Java program is writing the object and a Java program is reading the object and it just needs to be machine written and machine read. Very efficient, very quick way to do things. Now, what if we don't have those assumptions? What if we're going to possibly read this by a program written in another programming language? Or we want it to be human readable? Or we just want it in a more standard format that's not tied specifically to a language? Well, then we can serialize to JSON. And I'll pick up with that in the next video where we take a look at saving and opening objects in a JSON file. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.